So at this point, we now get into our lecture segment. And like I mentioned before, this morning we are bringing to a close our special feature on the road to Eid al-Adha. This morning we'll be having our last segment. So on our previous segments, we would have spoken about the calendar. We would have spoken about the history surrounding Eid al-Adha. We would have spoken about the meaning of those words and the sacrifice that it, re it represents. So this morning, as we come to an end of this particular series, we'll be talking about some of the lessons that we can learn from Eid al-Adha, from this very special time of the year. Like I mentioned it before, Monday coming on the 17th of June this year, we'll be celebrating the great of the two Eid, Eid al-Adha. So Eid al-Adha going out to you and yours from now. So it is a very special time. It is a time wherein the sacrifices of the Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, are commemorated. His willingness to sacrifice his son as an act of obedience to Almighty Allah. So from this particular occurrence, from this particular event, we can learn, first of all, number one, obedience to Almighty Allah. This is a lesson that we must take with us throughout all of the other days of our lives. The concept of surrendering to the will of Almighty Allah. The Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, he understood the command of Allah and he was able to surrender himself to the command of Allah. And that incident, you can find inspiration in his unwavering willingness to submit to the will of Almighty Allah, even when it entailed sacrificing something very, very dear to him. Almighty Allah mentions in one verse of the Quran, Whoever inculcate the quality of consciousness Allah will deliver him just like he delivered the Prophet Abraham peace be upon him. The second lesson we must take away from this season or from this you know celebration of the sacrifice is the faith and the trust that the Prophet Abraham peace be upon him had in Almighty Allah. He was able to embrace you know, his trust in, or he places his full trust in the Almighty. And that teaches us about the essence of faith and trust in Almighty Allah, his complete reliance on Allah's plan. Sometimes we plan, but Allah is the best of planners. It is important to understand that once we are able to have reliance on the plan of Allah, that will indeed deliver us to higher ground. Allah reminds us in the Quran that person who places his full trust in Allah. Allah says, He will find Allah most sufficient for him. Thirdly, a great lesson to take away from this beautiful time of the year. It is a, it is a reminder of devotion and generosity. Eid al-Adha serves as a great reminder of the importance of sacrifice. Sacrificing for those things which are important. Just as the Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, demonstrated his willingness to sacrifice his son, we also encourage to sacrifice our time, our wealth, our resources, for the sake of Almighty Allah and for the betterment of our societies and our communities. This noble act of selflessness, this noble act of devotion fosters compassion, empathy, and a deeper connection with others. Almighty Allah reminds us in the Quran in chapter 2, verse 245. Who is there that will lend Allah a goodly loan so that Almighty Allah may multiply that for him many times over? And it is Allah that decreases and increases your provision. And unto him is your final and your eventual return. So Eid al-Adha teaches us about uh, sacrifice, about generosity. It is a period where we try our very best to connect with our fellow 
human beings, our brothers, our sisters. And that brings us to the fourth point that we can take away from this period. The point of unity and community. And that strengthens our bonds. Eid al-Adha, of course, is a joyous occasion for us to come together as a unified community. It presents an opportunity to strengthen family, family ties, to strengthen friendships, to, stre to, to, to strengthen neighborly bonds. We are encouraged to engage in act of kindness, hospitality, and charity during this festive period. By sharing the blessings of the holidays with those in need, by sharing the blessings of these holy days with the less fortunate in the community, it cultivates a sense of togetherness and it fosters a spirit of compassion and generosity. And Almighty Allah reminds us in chapter 3, verse 103, Allah says, And hold fast to the rope of Almighty Allah all together. And don't ever, don't you ever, become divided because like they say united you stand divided you will fall and the fifth lesson that we can take away from this holy period from the sacrifices of the prophet abraham peace be upon him is gratitude expressing appreciation for your divine blessings Beyond all else, Eid al-Adha is a time for heartfelt gratitude. During these holy days, we get the opportunity to express thanksgiving unto Almighty Allah for the blessings bestowed upon us individually, collectively, and also as a nation. It serves as a reminder to appreciate the abundance in one's life and to acknowledge the countless blessings that a person receives every single day. By practicing gratitude, only then are we able to cultivate a sense of contentment, only then are we able to recognize humility, and only then are we able to foster a deeper connection with our Creator. And Almighty Allah reminds us in the Holy Quran, that that person who is able to be grateful Allah says, if you continue to give thanks for the bounties and the favors of Almighty Allah, Allah will most certainly increase you in favor. So our aim in these holy days is to strengthen your relationship with Almighty Allah. Foster harmonious communities and lead a life through virtue, lead a life through good deeds, through compassion, and Almighty Allah will elevate us. So on that note, I say to you once again, Eid Mubarak from now, Eid al Adha Mubarak from now, may your day be filled with the blessings of the Almighty. May Almighty Allah make it easy upon us. May Allah deliver us to that day because again, we have no guarantee for life. Today is the seventh day in the month of the Hijjah. Tomorrow will be the eighth. Sunday will be the ninth, which of course is also a very special day, the day of Yawm al-Arafah. And then the tenth of the Hijjah, which is on the Monday, will be the celebration of Eid. May Allah make it easy upon us. May Allah deliver us to that holy day. And may we be able to gain the beautiful lessons from this special time of the year. And may we be able to tap into the wisdom of the life of the Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him.